Okay, so I'm going to um, jump into the slide deck. I just before I get started and jump into the slide deck, I just wanted to say thank you for taking um, the time out uh, to join us and to run through things. Um, as I just mentioned, we will start with a few sort of core basics just to make sure we're all on the same page, and then we'll jump into some more um, intermediate and advanced tips along the way. So um, do stay tuned, and so hopefully we give uh, something for everybody who's on um, the call today. Um, so basically, just I wanted to start off with my sort of um, feeling of really what um, content marketing is. Um, so from my perspective, it's really about, you know, we're, we're creating um, content, of course, um, and that might be written content, it might be video, uh, but basically we're creating this content, which is really that um, content marketing piece, and then we're trying to sort of build up that community. So we're trying to amplify the message, and then we also have, uh, for most of us, we have a goal that's attached to that. So uh, probably for most of us, we're in a, like a business or an organisation. We're trying to build our customers. Um, so actually trying to really, you know, drive some uh, value for our organisation as well. Um, so just to sort of cover off on what I'm going to travel through uh, during today's session. Um, so first off, we really want to look at the data that's available inside Google Analytics to understand well what do people currently like on our website, say, or on our blog. Um, so using the reports to understand what people actually like, what they're engaging with. Um, from there, we want to really layer on some additional insights and one way we can do this is to start looking at, well, not just what content is popular on our website or on our blog, but also what's creating value for our organisation. Um, so we'll have a look at how we can actually use goals to understand that value um, that's occurring. Um, this will also help inform, you know, what should we be creating next? So if you are looking after, you know, your company's blog, um, then we can actually use Google Analytics in a sort of slightly more creative way and that's to help actually inform what we want to be writing um, or creating next um, in terms of our uh, content uh, marketing strategy. Um, and then we'll wind down um, at the end of the session with a few more advanced ideas to start uh, thinking about as well. Okay, so um, as we mentioned, a couple of things is sort of the shameless plug, and I'll do this again quickly at the end. Um, do check out my book, and I'll also talk at the end about um, some Love Starter training that's available as well. Um, also to highlight, we're going to go through some different um, links and resources. I'll put this up again at the end, and of course it will be tweeted out as well. Um, but um, so you don't have to sort of madly write down the URLs. You'll find all of them linked off at lovestarter.com forward slash SEMrush. Okay, so starting out with the basics, Google Analytics or any web analytics tool is really just measuring what's happening on our website or maybe our app, um, but it's simply a measurement um, tool, right? So we're measuring and we're creating these reports. It's really up to us um, to perform that analysis, to actually jump into Google Analytics and look at what's working and what's not working. So we perform that piece of analysis. And why do we want to do this? Well, we hopefully want to drive some improvement. Um, so we actually look at Google Analytics, we perform some analysis, and then we use that to make change and drive improvement. Now, when it comes to our content marketing strategy, that improvement is probably going to be to create more content that's actually engaging with your audience. If something's not working, we don't want to keep doing that, right? We want to actually change direction and pivot our strategy. So making sure that we're actually using the tool to our advantage and we're not just simply using Google Analytics for reporting because it does that automatically. It's really this analysis where we get value out of our Google Analytics. Um, so I did say we'd start off with some basics. So really importantly is um, some core terminology that we need to understand. Um, so when it comes to Google Analytics, when we jump into the interface, there's really three key things that we definitely need to um, understand as we're looking at our reports. Um, so we need to understand what a page view is, a session, and a user. Um, so basically let's um, have a quick look. Um, so first off, what is a user inside Google Analytics? Um, well, a user is simply where we count someone once uh, within the selected time period. Um, so it's where we take um, a date range and the number of users will be the total number of unique individuals who are accessing our website. Um, now this is obviously, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make things like simple to understand, um, but there can be some non-people in there as well, so there might be the odd robot, but ideally we're really talking about unique individuals who are accessing our site. 
Um, so here what we can see is um, two different interactions. So let's say I come to your website on Monday and I browse three different pages. Um, so what this means is that I've got these three different page views that are going to show up inside your Google Analytics reports. And because I went from you know your home page to your about us page, uh, maybe to your blog, um, those three page views occurred within a single session um, or instance uh, on your particular site. Um, so then we can see if I then decide to come back on Thursday and I browse two pages. In this particular case, I now have two page views, and because they're occurring on different days, I now have two separate sessions reported into Google Analytics. And so really this is where a user is, where it's actually combining these different sessions across um, different days together. So we've got two different sessions from one uh, user within our Google Analytics reports. Um, now really importantly when it comes to content is bounce rate and this is actually a really great starting point. So for those of you who are just starting out, I definitely encourage you to have a look at bounce rate. Um, so bounce rate is simply the percentage of sessions where there was only a single page view. And this can be really helpful um, depending on the context um, to understand the stickiness or how engaging um, that particular landing page is as people are coming through to your website. Um, so here we can see a, a sort of a scenario we've got on the left hand side we've got um, a single page view within a session and then they come back they view a single page view again um, with in that session and then we have two different people who are viewing two pages each. So in this particular case um, what we have is we have a 50% bounce rate. So in other words two people are just viewing a single page within those sessions while the other two are viewing more than one page. And so a 50% bounce rate gives you this understanding about the stickiness or the engagement at that starting point as people land uh, on your website. Now really importantly with bounce rate, um, I mentioned this briefly, is context. So you really do need to think carefully about what you expect people to do um, as they're landing on your page. So for example, if you have, say, um, you know, a really great piece of content and maybe you're driving ads to that piece of content on your website, that content then links through to your lead form. Um, in that particular case, you want to aim for a lower bounce rate. Whereas if you just have your general sort of company blog, um, in that particular instance, the bounce rate might actually be a lot higher because if you think about it, people can come into your blog, they can read that single page, you've given them the information, they've got the information, everybody's happy, but then they leave. So really think about the particular context and what you expect and want people to do on those pages as they travel into your site. In some instances, a higher bounce rate is actually okay and is acceptable. Um, so as we start out as well, now we've talked about you know, page views and sessions and users and bounce rate, which is an engagement metric. Um, as we travel through, we need to understand another thing, um, and this is a metric. Um, so a metric is basically um, the simplest way to think about a metric inside Google Analytics is a column and its data. Um, so here we can see in this particular instance, we've got a little example out of our geographic report from Google Analytics and we can see sessions is a metric, that's a column and they're pieces of data, so generally numbers um, that we find inside the report. So here we can see for this example we've got uh, people coming in from Canada, we've got over 15,000 sessions from Canada, we've got 2,000 sessions from Australia and so forth. Um, so this is a metric. And we can actually see we've got different metrics in our reports. So it's actually sessions is a metric, bounce rate is a metric, and pages per session, which is another engagement metric, um, is available inside our reports. Now this is important terminology to understand because a little bit later we'll be looking at creating a custom dashboard. And with a custom dashboard we need to be um, aware of basically what a metric is because it's one of the core building blocks of what we find inside Google Analytics. Okay, so another uh, couple more basic things before we move on to some more advanced concepts. Um, so first off, just this is a really quick refresh for maybe those people who haven't jumped into Google Analytics for a while. Basically, when you log into Google Analytics, you've got the Home tab. This is where you're going to find all the different accounts that you have access to. Reporting is probably where you're going to spend a lot of the time if you're actually inside um, the Google Analytics web interface. This is where all the reports are. Um, you can also create ad hoc reports under customization. So these are like custom reports to meet your particular needs. And then you can also modify your settings within the admin section. 
Okay, great. Um, so if we jump into the reporting tab, um, there's a number of different um, reports that we have access to. So we'll have a look at dashboards a little bit later. Um, this is where we can create these really great snapshots um, that provide this sort of concise summary of what's happening on your website. Um, you can also use shortcuts. That's actually a really great tip. Um, you can add shortcuts, which allows you to get back to things that you use on a regular basis. Um, intelligence events um, provides automated insights. Um, this is actually also a really good tip, not something we're going to go into today, but um, if you're ever stuck, if you're ever like, oh, I don't know what to look at inside Google Analytics, I really encourage you to check out the Intelligence Events Reports. It's actually uh, looking at the data coming into your website and building up a prediction model. So it's actually showing you weird things that are going on your website. Um, and this can be a really great starting point for that analysis that we're just talking about. And um, we've got the real-time reports. Um, this can be useful for your content marketing strategy. If you are launching like a big campaign, you can jump into the reports to understand what's happening um, on your website right now. So one example is maybe you've created some really great content, maybe you send out an email blast to your audience. Um, one thing that we did here at Love Starter is we always like to monitor that real-time report when we're sending out a really big email blast because we can understand you know, how people are actually engaging on our website as they click through. Um, we've actually used this, for example, to adjust things on um, that key landing page from an email blast um, when we noticed particular things that were occurring. You know, Maybe people weren't quite engaged, so we actually modified where we were sending people to. Um, so it can be really helpful to tweak things if you do have a large campaign. Um, the audience reports, um, you know, very, very useful. Um, not something we're going to get into a whole lot of detail today, but the audience reports are really about who's accessing your website. So if you wanted to understand in context of your um, content marketing, you know, what devices, say, people are looking at um, your content on, you would use the audience reports to understand those elements. Um, acquisition is all about how people are finding your website. Are they coming in off, you know, Bing or Google or Yandex? You know, how are they finding us? Um, behavior. Um, this is a really good one and this is probably a really important one, again, if you're starting out and you're wanting to look at you know, how your blog, say, is performing, how that content is performing. So the behaviour reports show you all what people are doing um, once they've landed on your website. Um, and also very important is conversions which show you the high value goals people are completing and that um, last one does require some setup that we'll talk about um, as we travel through today. Um, so the first question we really want to ask now that we've covered off on the basics is, well, what do people like on my website? Fantastic question to be asking. And this is really where we want to jump in to those behavior reports. Those are default reports, they're available for all of us, um, which is absolutely fantastic. And we can jump in um, and we can actually see what content people are looking at. Um, so here in this example, we're in the behavior reports, might be a little bit small, but we've basically navigated into site content and all pages. So it's really basic, but what this is showing us is all the pages on our website. And by default, it's listing out the pages in terms of their popularity based on those page views that we we're talking about a little bit earlier. So we can see um, you know, the number of page views for all the different content areas. So what we might want to do is we might look at like, okay, well, what has the most page views? So in this particular example, this is from a, a content site that's all about like, um, you know, home renovation and home decorating and all those sorts of things. Um, so in this particular case, it says that, um, our top page view is for, oh, sorry, our top page is for mini trend shelf hot. Um, so some blog post about creating a shelf um, in your home. So it might go, okay, well, great. You know, this is our most popular post. Let's create more content along that particular theme to try and grow our audience out. The other thing that we can actually see in this example, it might be a little bit small, but that top one on the right-hand side, the bounce rate is actually lower than the overall average um, for this particular website. So we know that people are actually you know, more, more people are likely to travel on to view a subsequent page on this particular site. Um, so it's a great starting point, just looking at the pages report and using that to actually, you know, create more content that's already popular on our site. And that's great. Um, but one thing that you might want to think about, and this is more advanced, is there's a really awesome feature called content grouping. 
Um, now, some of you might be using this, which is awesome. If you're not, it's okay. There's actually very few people actually make use of content grouping, but it's really quite fantastic. Um, I'm not going to um, go into the, all of the details of setting it up, but if you head off to the resource um, link that I'll again share at the end, um, there's some uh, links to help you out. But basically, content grouping allows you to actually aggregate or combine all of your different content into categories that you get to define. Um, so if you think back to that previous example, it was the shelf, right? The shelf post was our most popular post. Uh, but really, if we actually looked at our categories, this might provide us with a better direction as to the content that we should provide. Um, so this is actually, um, this is an example that um, has these page categories and this is actually based on WordPress. Um, so if you do have a WordPress site then awesome, this is actually using um, a plugin to feed in the page categories or the, the content areas or even the tags that you've assigned to particular pages or pe uh, blog posts that you've created to categorize them. So now what we can see is that you know, hey, the interiors and the interviews are our two most popular areas or categories of content. So what I might want to do is feed that back in to my strategy to say, well, I'm going to do more posts around interior, you know, design and DIY stuff in this particular example, and I'm also going to do um, some more posts around interviews because they are actually they're not quite as popular, but they're still actually really, really important in terms of driving that engagement, those page views uh, with my site's audience. Um, so this helps provide some additional insights um, that's actually aggregated together rather than just focusing in on the individual posts uh, within um, the pages on our site. Now the other thing to think about is social uh, interaction. So we've looked at like page views, which is great, but what about you know engagement in terms of social? Because we all know social is going to help when it comes to that community element um, of our content strategy. And so what we want to be asking is, well, what do people um, actually share. So if they've come to, through to our site or our blog, what are they actually sharing? What's engaging people to share it through to their connections on social networks? Um, now I'm just going to go through one example. Um, unfortunately, I'm not paid by Add This. I wish I was, but I'm not. <laughs> but basically, I'm just including this one example simply because this is the one that we're using here at Love's Data. Um, uh, it's certainly not perfect. There's things about it that I hate. There's things about it that I think are great. Um, but this is just what we're using. So this is why I'm sharing this one. There's also other ones. Um, so there's also like share this, for example. So whatever plugin you're using. But this can be a really quick way to understand what content people are sharing. So basically, if you come through the Love Starter blog on our posts, we have the little, you know, the social, um, the social widget that allows people to share um, the particular individual posts. You probably, hopefully have one too, right? Um, so ours is add this, you might have share this or another tool. But basically what we want to do is we want to feed this data into our Google Analytics reports because it's going to provide us with some really great insights. Um, so this is the um, add this um, code snippet. So this is basically a little bit of JavaScript that allows us to include that social sharing widget. Um, so if you actually head to their support page, um, there's a really simple thing we can do to just add in a little bit of extra code here and the little bit that I've highlighted in red there is our Google Analytics property ID and what this basically means is that now we've got our widget on our content but when people actually click to say you know um, you know, share that on Facebook or you know, um, you know, on Twitter and so and so forth. It's actually going to feed that into the Google Analytics social reports as well, which is really fantastic. So it's just a few extra lines of code, definitely worth doing. Um, and as I mentioned, this is for Add This, but also if you're using another um, widget tool like Share This and so forth, just um, check out their support documentation, and they'll be able to help you um, get this. Um, into Google Analytics as well. So what this provides us is a report al along these lines. So now what we can actually see is are people sharing content? So in this particular case I can see you know, lots of people sharing on Twitter and LinkedIn and Pinterest and so forth um, for our particular site. Um, but we can actually even go a step further and we can see well not just you know, overall what people are doing like this example, we can even see which particular pieces of content are getting the highest level of engagement directly within Google Analytics. So it just makes our life a little bit easier. So if you're wondering where to find that, um, you'll actually find it in the acquisition reports. Under social, 
and then once you've uh, added those few extra little uh, lines of code, you'll be able to come into the plugin section and this is where you'll find the social interactions report where you'll actually be able to see what people are interacting with, if they're liking it, disliking it, etc. Um, right within uh, Google Analytics. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, now the other thing that we need to think about is promotions because really a lot of us are using our blog to help promote our other offerings, right? So here, um, this is an example. So this is like a a, um, a food uh, a food blog, and. Um, in the right-hand column, they actually have space to share messages about, um, you know, their offering, so their paid offering, as well as other partners that they're working with. So if we're generating content to then try and get people to like make a purchase or something like this through a banner tile, then we want to make sure that we're taking the time to also be measuring, you know, which banners people are engaging with into our Google Analytics reports, because that's going to provide us insights about, you know, not just what content is popular, but which content is actually driving the actions um, that we want people to perform um, within our content as well. So there's a few options for doing this. Um, so the first option is event tracking. Um, so with Google Analytics, we can use event tracking to measure these custom interactions that are occurring within our content. So we've got three options when it comes to event tracking. Um, option one is to modify our code. So we could actually go into our blog and where that particular banner is placed, we could add a little bit of extra sort of JavaScript code um, to identify when someone clicks on that banner. Um, the other option is we could use a plugin. So, for example, if we were using WordPress or Joomla or another sort of um, you know popular uh, CMS system, um, then we could use a plugin um, that would then allow us to measure this into Google Analytics. So, for example, with WordPress, you can you know quickly um, add in a Google Analytics plugin, and you can like check a box, and it'll automatically like you know um, measure events. Awesome, fantastic. Um, the other option that we also have um, that we'll talk a, a little bit about um, towards the end of the session is Google Tag Manager. Um, so Google Tag Manager um, basically allows you to do some basic things like you know measure all the pages on our site, um, but it also allows us to do more advanced things as well. So um, you know measuring um, particular um, interactions within a site too. So we've got three different options. Um, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever um, is going to work um, for you. Okay. Um, so we can use that first option, which is event tracking. Fantastic, awesome, great. Um, but um, one thing to think about is actually using enhanced e-commerce. Now this is um, probably more on the advanced side and probably considered more of a little bit of a hack. Um, but basically, enhanced e-commerce is really fantastic. So um, you know, a whole other topic, I suppose, but, you know, quick tip, if you are selling online, definitely make sure you're using the very latest enhanced e-commerce tracking code. It's got some really powerful ability to really drill down and understand very precise actions that people are taking um, within your store. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so coming back to our content strategy, um, we had those banners, right? So one thing that we can do with enhanced e-commerce um, that, that you know, we really wouldn't want to do with event tracking is we can do this. We can measure impressions of um, the different banners that we have um, within our content. And just again to highlight, you certainly use enhanced e-commerce if you are selling online, but this is also, you can use this if you're not selling online to measure the impressions of those banners on your non-e-commerce website as well. Um, so we can measure the impression. We can then use enhanced e-commerce to measure the view of the particular promotion um, all the way through to the particular objective, be it a transaction or even just you know filling out our contact form, whatever it is. So this is actually really powerful because it allows you to understand um, you know, how many people are traveling through on different types of banners. Really, really awesome. Um, also really awesome if you're using uh, or testing different sort of calls to action in your banners. If you're familiar with Google AdWords, um, then you know you're familiar with click-through rate, right? Um, so basically with enhanced e-commerce, you can use click-through rate um, to understand you know, how engaging the performance is of the content within your own site, um, which is really uh, quite fantastic. Okay, um, so now um, moving on. So we've talked about how we might measure banners. Um, really, really important, no matter what um, our website's about, is to try and assign a value um, to understand, you know, are we actually driving the outcomes that we want to achieve um, with our content marketing strategy? Um, so 
first off, we definitely, definitely, definitely want to make sure that we have goals um, set up. Um, so if you were um, answering before that you were just sort of starting out with Google Analytics, you definitely want to take some time to configure goals. There's three different types of goals you can set up um, inside Google Analytics. Uh, this is the, by far the most common one and this is a page based goal or a destination goal and this is in essence where you're trying to get someone to view a particular page on your website. Um, probably a thank you page or a confirmation page. Um, so for example if you do, if you're trying to generate leads off your content marketing strategy then you'll have a, like a form of some sort and then you'll have a thank you page and you can configure that as a page based or a destination goal. Uh, if you have video elements on your site um, then um, you can use event based goals as well so it does require the event tracking that we were talking about earlier and then we can configure a goal so you might say I want to fire off a goal um, every time someone completes watching one of my videos um, so that way we've got an event based goal as well. Um, and finally we can create engagement based goals so this is either based on people spending a certain amount of time on your site um, or viewing a certain number of pages, um, so it's an engagement goal. Um, so when it comes to identifying goals, let's have a look at a scenario. So um, I was having a look at um, the Buffer blog, um, so having a look at their blog and you know, this is a, a case where, you know, at first glance it might be just, oh, you know, I've just got one goal on my site. So really spend some time, you know, load up your website and really take some time to think about all of the different objectives that occur um, within um, the particular page you're looking at. So here if we look at this page, so first of all, for off at the top, okay, yeah, it's in red, it's like, you know, please, you know, use us. Um, but So it's a very clear call to action to schedule your post with Buffer. So if you're not familiar with Buffer, it's like a social sharing um, app. Um, so they're trying to get us to schedule our first post to share off to social media. So clearly, definitely want to make sure that we're measuring that as a goal inside Google Analytics if this is our blog. Um, then on the left hand side we can see there's all those uh, social widgets that we're just talking about. So again we want to make sure that we're measuring that um, into the social reports um, inside Google Analytics because uh, we want to understand that engagement right. Um, so then if we travel down um, in this particular post there's you know, a, a big video, right? So we, we want to actually measure if people are, are watching um, this video content embedded within our page. So, so far we've got, you know, three key areas that we need to make sure that we're measuring um, to understand people's engagement with our content. Um, if we travel down further um, in the um, bottom right hand side, again we can see there's this call to action to schedule a post. So again we want to take the time to travel through our site and make sure all of these different calls to action and ways that people can interact are being measured into Google Analytics. Travel down further, um, you know, probably for us, we, you know, if we're talking about content marketing, there's probably a lot of us that have a blog, right? And we probably have a comment section. So the effort it takes for someone to actually type up a comment is huge, right? So we want to make sure that we're measuring people actually taking that time um, to, to write a comment into our Google Ads reports because then we might want to report on well, you know, what content's popular, what content is driving the most comments um, that we're generating as well. So what, what's popular in terms of the commenting. Um, we can also see travelling down further we might have an email newsletter sign up form. So again these are things that we want to be measuring and again another call to action on the bottom of this post. So all of these little things add up right and we want to make sure that we have clarity in our reports for all of these different types of interactions that are occurring. So definitely encourage you, take the time to travel through your pages and make sure you make a note of all these different things and then you want to make sure that you're also measuring it into Google Analytics because it will provide you with much, much richer insights into what people are actually doing. Okay, um, so what we've done so far is we've gone through our site and we've listed down all of these different actions, right? So we had the email subscribers, social interactions, the banners that are promoting things, we've got um, email link clicks and comments. So we've written down all the different things people can do within that content that we're generating. So then what we need to do is we need to map that against how we're actually going to measure it inside Google Analytics. Um, so here we can see as we've got, well, the first one, email subscribers, they fill out a form and they travel through to a thank you page. So it's going to be a page based goal that we configure inside Google Analytics. 
And in this particular example, we can then see we've got a whole set of events that we need to make sure that we're measuring as well. Um, so we want to make sure we're using that event tracking. So we might use Tag Manager or some other method um, to make sure that we've got that um, inside our reports. Okay, so we've listed them out, we've thought about how we're going to measure them, and then we've configured you know, the page-based goals, um, the event-based goals, and so forth. Now the next thing, um, really critical, is to think about assigning a value to all those different goals. Now this can actually be, um, this can be a little bit challenging if you are starting out or if it hasn't been done before within your organisation. Um, so really I encourage you to try not to skip this step because it is, as we're going to see, it's going to actually provide some richer insights for us within Google Analytics. This is also some good homework for everybody, um, is to jump into Google Analytics and make sure, go through all the different goals that you've got configured and confirm, check that they actually have a dollar value assigned to them. Now, with dollar value, this can be a little bit daunting, I suppose. So. If we're selling online, um, then we can put we can use e-commerce tracking to understand the actual revenue figure, right? So that's pretty logical. Okay, great. Yeah, if I'm selling online, I use e-commerce tracking, and I used enhanced e-commerce tracking. Great. Um, now, what if we're generating leads? Okay, so if we're generating leads online, then we might want to use um, a calculated dollar value. So, for example, if you have a form um, on your website. Um, we might um, take that form and you might say, okay, I've got my form and so many, you know, 10 people fill out my form and then of those 10 people, maybe just a couple turn into actual clients um, for uh, my organisation. So in that particular case, is we take the two um, actual leads and understand the value. So we look at, you know, how much we earned from those two leads and then we take that total earning and we divide that by the initial 10. So we take, so let's say we've got two people who become clients and it's a total value of um, let's say $1,000. So we take the $1,000 value and we divide it by 10 which means on average the 10 people who filled out our lead form are worth $100 each. So that would be our calculated value that we then plug in um, to Google Analytics. Um, so if you can calculate a value, plug it in. It might be a little bit rough. Um, so, you know, my example was a little bit rough. Um, but actually taking that value and assigning it as a calculated value can be really, really powerful inside Google Analytics. And the other thing I should highlight is that even if you've calculated a value, you can decide to change that later, right? So if you're like, oh, you know, my $100 wasn't quite right, it's actually more like, you know, $90, you can always go back and edit the value inside your goal configuration. Um, so that's calculated value. Um, and then the other thing is absolute worst case is symbolic um, dollar value. So if you if you're not actually generating e-commerce sales, if you're not generating leads where you can do that calculation, then use a symbolic dollar value. And this is where you're basically assigning a value uh, based on what you feel that action is worth on your site. So again, you list out all your goals and you might say, well, um, people commenting on my blog are worth $10 because that takes a lot of energy. Uh, people filling out my um, the email, subscribing to my email list are maybe worth um, $50 because, you know, once they actually fill that out, I can market to them actively. Someone who's watching a video might be $2 because it's, yeah, it's important, but I don't get to know who they are. Um, I don't get to necessarily market back to them directly. So, you know, you basically use that symbolic um, value as a sliding scale um, as to what you feel um, that particular interaction is worth. And again, you can always change it if you're not comfortable with it um, moving forward. Okay, so we've taken the time now to assign a value to all our goals, so we're either using actual, calculated or symbolic dollar value. And this is really one reason why we want to be doing that, uh, page value. It's an absolutely fantastic metric um, available inside Google Analytics and probably one of the most overlooked uh, metrics, ones that you know lots and lots of people just skip over, so don't skip over page value because page value will actually allow you to understand what content is valuable and driving value on your site.
Um, so there's really a couple of requirements. You either you need a goal um, or at, with a goal value. Um, so you need a goal and a goal value or and or um, e-commerce. Um, so we need these um, in order to be able to make use of um, the page value metric. Um, so just before we have a look at um, an example, just to show you how it works. Um, so let's, um, you know, in the context of our content marketing, let's say we're looking after a blog. So we've, uh, someone comes into our blog and they look at post A. Um, so that might be, um, I don't know, <laughs> think about your organisation, think about some, some post that you've just written. So it might be, um, you know, let's say I wrote a post about um, um, Google AdWords as post A. And then post B was a post about uh, Google Analytics, say. Um, so in this particular instance, someone's read my post A, then read my post B, and then converted on one of my goals. Um, so now with that goal value I assigned, let's say I assigned $4 for that goal, what Google Analytics will do is it will take that goal value and split it between the pages that people saw leading up um, to the conversion. So what that means is that for this scenario, that person um, viewed post A and then post B. So post A gets $2 credit out of the available $4 and post B gets $2 credit out of the available $4. So now we're actually using that to understand the value of each page in the context of someone who then goes on to actually convert on our website. Um, so now let's say someone else goes and they read post B and then they read post C and again they convert and again the value is $4. What this means now is that post B gets another $2 and post C gets $2 as well. Um, so then inside the reports, it aggregates all of this together. So from our example, we have one page view for post A. So that means that that page, that post, has a total dollar value of $2. Post B, because it was viewed in those two different scenarios leading to the conversion, has a higher value. It's now $4 of value for our particular website, and Post C also gets $2. So what this allows us to do in this sort of you know, very simple scenario is we can see that Post B um, drives more value compared to the other posts. So in other words, we can now understand what's driving value um, through our content strategy. Um, so what we can do now is we can jump back into the pages report that we are looking at earlier and if you have a look um, all the way across to the right hand side in your report, I've sort of um, pulled it up here um, in this screen grab just to make it a little bit easier to see, but here what we can actually see now is I can see the different pages people are engaging with on our site and I can see the dollar value uh, based on those um, goal values um, that people are converting. So now I can say, well, hey, you know, yeah, that, um, that post that we saw earlier, the mini trend shelf hot, whatever that post is, um, is actually on average worth six cents in terms of our, our conversion value. While this, you know, five uh, must try DIYs for the home is actually worth much more. It's worth 15 cents as opposed to the six cents. So what this might do is it might help inform my strategy to say, well, hey, yeah, the mini trend post, yeah, great, it's popular in terms of page views, but hey, this other DIY post is actually driving much more value uh, for my organisation. So what I might do now is I might try and look at that piece of content and write more content that's going to drive additional value uh, based on those goals. So really some fantastic insights to be had um, from um, the page value metric. Um, so when you jump into Google Analytics next, head into the pages report under behaviour um, and keep an eye out for the page um, value column. It's going to be on the right hand side there. And also again, just remember, if you haven't set up a goal value, this is going to be pretty boring. It's going to be zero. Um, so that's going to be your homework is to make sure that you assign a page value to all the different goals that you've got configured um, inside um, Google Analytics. Okay, so now the next question is, well, what should I be posting? Um, so reports allow us to do this. So we can jump in and use the different reports. One that I'd really encourage you to look at to start with is Site Search. This can provide those really wow moments for you um, when you jump into Google Analytics. So really quick insights into what people are looking for. Um, so Site Search, for those who are not familiar, are basically reports around what people are actually searching for within your website. So if we go to the SME Rush uh, blog, we can see on the top right hand corner there, there's the search function. If we plug in, say, Google Analytics, um, we then um, get the search results page. And if you do this for your own um, search function, 
um, what we can see here is that um, for the SEM, SEM rush um, blog is that S equals the particular term that we're searching for. So we can actually take this S as the um, query parameter that's driving the search function. So we can configure that inside Google Analytics and what that will do is it will now read out all the different search terms people are entering um, and they're actively looking for content, right? So think about this. This is some really incredible insights because people are telling you exactly what they're looking for. So if you don't have any content on what they're looking for, that's a great opportunity to create um, some new engaging content um, to appeal to your audience. And the other thing that we can do in terms of reporting is sort of coming full circle, so coming back to um, what we were talking about at the start, and this is about creating a dashboard. Um, so this is a, a dashboard, and I've actually um, I've shared this with um, with everybody in in the link um, in the resource link that I'll put up again in a moment, um, so you can add this um, immediately into your Google Analytics account. It just combines a few different things, so it gives you like the number of users that we talked about. It gives you some engagement metrics like. Um, this is the average number of pages people view in a session, um, so it gives you that sort of um, overall level of engagement. Um, but then it also combines what we've talked about and looked at, so like the top page views. Um, it also adds in a, you can do a quick comparison in the dashboard to understand, well, not only you know what's driving page views, but what's driving those social actions we're talking about, so which, um, which posts are actually driving engagement where people are liking them and so forth. Um, and then the all important page value, so which pages are driving the most value, so I might use that to then create more, um, more content that's actually going to be driving value for um, my organisation. Um, it's got some event tracking so you can see if people are like heading off or you know clicking on the promotions and so forth within your blog post. So this is actually a really great widget. Um, so this widget within the dashboard um, shows you the page used by hour, um, so hour of the day. So you can use this to actually inform your posting strategy. So here in this example we can see that the majority of the page views on this particular site are happening at 4 p.m. So what we might want to do is we might want to make sure that our posts are out before that peak time. So if we were to say to post them at 3 p.m., uh, sorry, not 3 p.m., um, after 4 p.m., so if we post them at like 5 p.m., um, then we're potentially missing out on that big chunk of traffic. So just you know, tweaking things to make sure it's happening at the right time for our audience. Um, and then the internal search function that we're just talking about, really important, the site search reports to understand what people are actually typing in, um, looking for to help inform what content we're going to create next. Um, another one, probably a whole other topic, we only have an hour so um, we'll have to keep moving, but another one is um, setting up the demographic reports, um, really great thing to do as well. So that's going to provide you with insights off um, Google's double click um, cookie around you know, what people are interested in, so it can be another idea um, to help you know, drive some thinking around what you're going to write next. Um, and then just some overall trend lines around, you know, page views and users and um, goal conversions that are occurring as well and, and how people are finding the site. So a breakdown of the different um, marketing channels that are driving traffic um, through to your content. Um, so you can grab that dashboard. Um, you can head to, and I'm sure again it's been tweeted, um, but lifestyle.com forward slash SEM uh, rush. Um, and then you can actually just click on the link. Um, it's towards the top of the page there and you'll be able to um, add that dashboard directly into your Google Analytics account. You can even customize it if there's something you don't quite like. You know, feel free to hack it up um, and do what you need to do um, to get a report that's going to help you um, understand your content uh, marketing in more detail. Um, so just before we jump into questions, I just wanted to add in a couple of advanced things as well um, to get people started. So um, some other things that you might want to think about when it comes to your content marketing strategy is scroll depth. So if you're generating really long content pieces, um, then it can be really important. So in this particular instance, this page is actually super, super long. So being able to understand you know, how far down people are making it can um, provide some really great insights. Um, so this is a little, uh, and again, there's a link on the resource site. Um, Comito is um, a little plug-in, little piece of JavaScript that, and this is actually developed by the guys who developed um, Urchin software, which then became Google Analytics. This is actually by um, the original um, Google Analytics developers, and really fantastic. So to measure scroll depth, all I need to do is that. I just like put in this bit of code and say, track scroll depth, yep, do it, and it does it. It's absolutely brilliant um, and can be a really quick way to measure a whole bunch of things. So I'm just looking at scroll depth here, but you can, you've probably noticed there's things like tracking forms and outbound links and downloads and a whole um, a whole range of things. So definitely check out uh, Kamito. Um, there's a link for that. Oh, it's um, it's um, on GitHub as well, right? So it's open source, so um, definitely worth checking out. Um, you can 
also, by the way, add that into Google Tag Manager. Um, so Google Tag Manager, if you're not using Tag Manager, um, it is a little bit more advanced. So if you're just sort of starting out, you know, maybe you don't want to jump in. But if you are sort of more on the development side, a little bit more technical, it can basically clean up your tags. So here we can see there's a whole bunch of different tags on all the different pages on our site. And what we do is with Tag Managers, we basically take um, that one Tag Manager tag and then we actually use Google Tag Manager to determine which tag to fire on which particular page and which interaction um, that's occurring within our site. And you can also see that I've used um, Tag Manager to manage that add this uh, plugin that we're talking about for the social um, widgets as well. Um, so we're not going to, um, you know, obviously we don't have a lot of time, but um, definitely check out Google Tag Manager. Um, you can plug in your tracking ID um, and then you can install that um, across the different pages of your site. Um, so before we jump to questions, I just wanted to quickly wrap up with some key takeaways. So please do um, make use of the dashboard that we just went through. Um, focus on the important metrics. Um, so you don't need to use every single metric inside Google Analytics. Focus on the ones that are important to you um, to help drive your content marketing. I definitely encourage you to check out uh, the page value uh, metric. Um, the other thing is to only configure what you'll use. So I've sort of touched on a whole lot of different ideas from goals to um, content grouping, events, social, scroll depth, all those different things. Um, just make sure you start out by configuring what's actually going to be useful for you and your organization. You don't necessarily need to set up everything all at once. Um, so focus on and use the data that's going to help you drive um, improvement. Um, and again, don't forget the resources. Um, and if you do want to learn more, then do check out um, my book um, and also check out um, Love's Data's Training Academy as well. I've got a special offer and you'll find that on um, the resource uh, page as um, well. Um, so now, I guess, um, back, to, back to over to you guys, right? So um, what questions uh, can I, I can help with, hopefully, see how we go. Yes, um, so I don't know the link off the top of my head, but they do have a little plugin that you can use to measure like a one page site um, that um, will help um, with that. Um, so maybe um, try tweeting that question to me and I'll, um, I'll try and find the link for you. I, I won't try and um, do that right now. But yeah, there's a little plugin that you can use. Um, if you don't want to use Google's um, plugin, then um, you can also use like event tracking and those sorts of things. Um, also just reading the question though, I suppose, um, Nick, the other thing is, um, uh, so that was, I was answering the question in terms of Google Analytics in particular, in terms of measurement. Um, in terms of SEO, I mean that's a whole nother um, scenario. So I'm, I'm certainly not like your SEO specialist, um, but I'm sure it's going to, it's going to vary depending on the particular site. So, um, you know, if you, if you imagine the scenario in terms of organic optimization, if you have one page versus a, pa a site that has like thousands of pages, then um, Probably Google's going to preference the one with thousands of pages, so it just depends on the context. Yeah, so great question, Lauren. Um, basically, uh, the answer is actually a bit tricky. It's sort of yes and no. Um, so content grouping is really about, um, in the end, the outcome is about how you want to report um, the the content that people are engaging with on your site. So it's really about um, getting to a reporting stage um, and what you want to see in the report. So for example, um, let's say the Love Starter blog, we write posts on AdWords and analytics and different topics. So what we might want to do is be able to use the content grouping to understand um, what's the performance of all of our AdWords related posts and what's the performance of all our analytics related posts. So we use that grouping um, to, to put all of the pages um, within those different groups. Um, so that comes down to reporting. Then coming back to my yes, no, um, in terms of getting to those reports, there's different ways of actually doing that. So you can um, feed in the grouping, the way that you're going to categorize your content within the tag. So yes, you can do that. Uh, but you can also do it within the back end, within the admin section of Google Analytics as well. So you can actually jump in and you can do it based on like um, what's in the URL. Um, so you can sort of create your little filter, like it's sort of like a filter to narrow down and define um, your different content grouping. So you can do, you can do it within the tag itself. You can also do it within the back end uh, of Google Analytics. Um, so if you just head in to admin um, inside Google Analytics and then under the view column in the right hand side, you'll be able to um, um, set up your content groupings for the reporting view.
it should record likes as well. So um, it should record, um, yeah, Facebook likes, um, shares, and so it should record all of those. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not an official ad this person. So it's just what we use here at Loves Data. So definitely check out their support resource if you want some um, more detail. Yeah, good question. So um, a page view versus a unique page view. Um, so basically if you think about a session, um, so someone comes into your website, um, so let's say someone comes into your website, they view the home page, they view um, your contact page, and then they view your home page again um, within a single session. In that particular case, the home page will have um, two um, page views, um, so you have a total of two page views, but as a unique page, you'll only be counted once within the session. So basically, a unique page you count is where you just count the page once within a session, even if people are accessing it multiple times. Um, so I was using, oh, I can't remember. Um, I was using, I can't remember the official name. Again, maybe tweet me, but um, it's basically there's, uh, it's a Google Tag Manager. I was using a Google Tag Manager plugin, and within the Tag Manager plugin within WordPress, you can basically there's like a checkbox um, that you can say I want to measure um, the um, the categories um, of my and, and or the tags as well um, for my WordPress content. Um, so maybe uh, if you you can have a look as well, or you can yeah send me a tweet. But um, I think there's like a couple of okay looking um, Google Tag Manager plugins, and it's one of them. I just can't remember off the top of my head which one. I love it. Um, so basically, it de the bounce rate on the last page is going to vary. So for example, if someone goes to one page and then leaves, um, then that's going to be a bounce um, off that particular page, that single page. If someone goes to one page and then another page and then leaves, no bounce has happened at all. Um, so in that particular case, there's no um, bounce. Um, so the bounce rate is not always zero on the last page because of the fact that someone can bounce off the first and last page being the same page, if that makes sense. So if you land in and bounce, that is your first page, but it's also your last page, um, and that would be a bounce. Um, so you would see a bounce rate against that particular scenario. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I really, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't recommend sending another page view before someone closes the browser or the tab, because um, what that will do is it will basically, um, so if you think about the bounce rate, because um, someone can spend a, a really long time on a page and then leave, um, you don't get time, as an example, if it's just that one page and they bounce. Um, so if you were to do something like adding in a second page, you're like forcing a page you to send to Google Analytics, then you're sort of like skewing it in the other direction. So Google Analytics is skewing it down, and a lot of um, like um, you know Web Analytics tools will do that as they'll skew skew down as opposed to skewing up. So by forcing a page, you'd be skewing up the numbers, um, which would then make analysis um, more difficult in a totally different way. Um, so I'd probably recommend not doing that. Um, but what I would recommend is making sure that you're mapping out all of the interactions um, that you want to measure within the page. Um, so you might want to measure like the videos and the links and all those sorts of things. Um, and one thing you might want to do is you might want to use like um, the scroll depth, right? So you could say look at the scroll depth within the page to help um, build up a picture of you know how how well people are engaging with that piece of content. Um, so that would be my suggestion. I mean, there's, you can, of course, with Google Analytics, you can do whatever you want as well. Um, it comes down to what you want to do. So I mean, we, when it comes to social media reporting, you're probably going to want to use um, a third-party tool or even a combination of different tools, um, simply because um, Google Analytics is awesome, but it's really focused on once someone's on your website. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to understand like engagement that's happening on the social network itself, you're not really going to find that inside Google Analytics. Um, you know, there are some, um, Google did make an attempt um, to um, bring in some of that sort of off-site 
um, interaction into Google Analytics, into the social reports, but it's missing the big ones, like it's missing Facebook and Twitter, um, where you've got those large audience members. So it's you know pretty much <laughs> not worth looking at. Um, so really think about Google Analytics in terms of what are people engaging with on my website? And then yes, you're going to want to complement that with a tool around what's happening on the actual individual social networks themselves. Um, one thing I would encourage you to also look at um, if you are um, advertising on social networks and you're driving people from the social network through to your website or your content on your website is to look at um, a really cool feature called cost data upload. So if you're say um, spending budget on LinkedIn say to drive traffic to your website, um, you can then take um, like the clicks and then the impression and the advertising budget data and push it into Google Analytics um, to do comparisons with your other campaigns like Google AdWords, for example. Um, so that's cost data upload, another a whole other feature um, that's worth looking at. Um, yeah, so um, basically in terms of, um, so this is about the acquisition reports, which is all about how people are finding your website. Um, in essence, a referral is when um, someone clicks from a one website through to your website and it sees that as a referral. So you'll see referral um, as the medium, um, how the message is communicated, and then you'll see um, the particular individual website as the source. So for example, if someone clicked through from um, LinkedIn to your website, then you'd see um, the, the medium as referral and the source as LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, that's a referral, a, a link from another website. Um, direct is a little bit um, more complicated, so um, to keep it simple, direct is pretty much when people are keying in your URL into their browser window. So they open up a browser and they key in your URL and they come straight through to your website. Um, that's the simplest way to think about direct traffic. Um, if you're more advanced, um, basically um, direct is whenever Google Analytics doesn't actually know how someone's finding your website. So that's probably a little bit confusing. If you're starting out, just think about direct as someone typing it into the URL um, or coming directly through to your website. Oh, smart goal. Yes. Yeah, so smart goals are new. Um, smart goals are basically designed. Um, they're designed and they have a focus on your Google AdWords campaigns. So basically the idea is that um, Google has um, looked at a, a huge, huge amount of data um, to pinpoint the types of traits, um, so the types of um, things that people do and, um, and other behaviors and, and other pieces of information about people who are likely to convert on your website. So basically they've looked at a whole lot of data and they found, okay, well these are the sort of things that um, are common amongst people who are likely to convert on your site. So it's basically a way to um, help target your advertising to people who are more likely to convert, um, even if you don't necessarily have a goal um, configured um, inside your Google Analytics account. So smart goals are like an, alg um, an algorithm learning, machine learning, um, to try and target ads to people who are more likely to convert than not convert. Yeah, so referral spam um, is, yeah, I mean, it's a problem. Um, you know, honestly, I think Google could probably have done, um, uh, have been a little bit more proactive in terms of addressing um, the referral spam. Um, but um, basically, in, in terms of referral spam, the things that we're doing here at Lovestar is we, we, one, there's like the, there's a little checkbox now inside the view report that will um, eliminate a very, very small portion of spam, but hey, it's something, so we, we tick the box, um, so that's worth doing in the view um, settings. And then the other thing that we're doing is, of course, um, using filters. So, um, you know, setting up filters um, inside Google Analytics to then um, filter out that traffic. Um, yeah, so there's no sort of, um, there's no easy solution, I suppose, currently, but it's definitely something that um, Google's working on, maybe a little bit slower than they should have been, but they are working on it, and I think um, in the coming months we should see a lot more activity um, on Google's end to actually um, help um, reduce that referral spam coming into our report. 
Yeah, so I, I think that comes back to the context. Um, so really thinking about the context when it comes to bounce rate. If you do, if you are really featuring your phone number heavily, um, then and and you're getting calls, um, then fantastic. I mean, that's that's what you want, right? You want calls. So um, that's the context. So in that particular case, you might be more comfortable with a higher bounce rate in that instance. So in that scenario, you might sort of move your focus from bounce rate as a metric maybe into page value or some of the other metrics that are available because I mean the only other option is to like um, you know move the number or um, you know hide the number and then make people click but in the in the end like you want the call um, so let them call <laughs> don't make it harder for people to call um, make it easier um, so that would be my suggestion. I mean, there are other things that you could do. Like, I mean, the, you know, you could have phone tracking. I mean, you could switch out the numbers and all that sort of thing. But, I mean, uh, you, you know, if uh, you've got to also ask yourself whether that's actually worth the investment to, to do that as well. So, um, if not, then I just say, well, it's the context. You know, you, you expect to have a higher bounce rate. Therefore, I'm not going to be as concerned about the bounce rate as maybe some of the other metrics. So maybe shift that focus to some of the other metrics that are available. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's going to depend on um, on what what sort of uh, privacy settings they have. Like, I mean, if they've like, um, you know, if it's like do not track and they've like locked down JavaScript or you know cookies and stuff like that. If they um, basically Google Analytics needs the JavaScript to work and it needs a cookie to log um, in order to to see that data inside Google Analytics by default. Um, so um, basically, if we're talking about in incognito, then it's sort of like a discrete session. So basically, um, the JavaScript will load, the cookies will log within the incognito window, uh, but then when they close that window, the cookies will clear, right? So in that particular instance, you're probably going to see um, a higher number of users because if someone then loads up another incognito window, there's going to be a new set of cookies um, and therefore um, a new user inside Google Analytics. So you'll still see the session um, and the page views as long as the cookies and the JavaScript are loading, but then if it's clearing the cookies and then people coming back, um, then you're going to see higher uh, user numbers in that particular instance. <laughs> 